I am coming to you from about 2,000 years ago. I do not believe that. Oh, really? I don't believe that at all. Are you kidding me? Don't literally just walk by and say, what's up, guys? I don't think you're coming to me. Well, guys, I've been walking around, and everyone's in a bad mood. I don't know what's going on with this place. Like, it, I just got here like yesterday, and everybody is like all like moody and like, what's going on? What What is happening in your guys' time? Famous people die. COVID-19, uh, Australia and all burned down multiple times. Uh, half our country has burned down because the election. There's cities are getting destroyed. Um, <laughs> Happening that makes everybody just like moody. Yes. Racism. Racism. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's good. The most hurricane in a long time. Most hurricane in a long time. Uh, lady in the blue and red. I don't know your names because I'm from 2,000 years ago. Oh. Did you get bitten by a camel? Yes. Yeah. A camel named Daniel. One more. Um, and the, the Earth is heating up in an extremely unhealthy fashion. Mm, global warming. And it's called okay. the microphone. How do you know global warming is from 2,000 years ago? I've heard it through the news. Or how do you even know what the news is? So, I don't know, maybe it's, is this a good way to put it? It just seems like there's like a lack of like, hope. Is that is that fair? Yeah. Is there like a lack of hope? It's just bad. Yeah. Good job, you're saying like, uh, So, thank you. Yeah. So today, what I thought I'd talk to you guys about, a little, share a little bit about my story, um, and I want to share with you guys where does hope actually come from? Because I, I have some friends who have actually been, at least from like a similar, they come from a similar perspective where you guys are, where I had this friend, his name was Benny, all right? And Benny, he owned a lot of sheep, all right? But Benny, one day, all these animals came in and took away like half of Benny's sheep. And I go to Benny. And Benny's like distraught and he's hopeless, doesn't have any, anything to go on. And I was like, dude, like, why in the world are you placing like all your hope and significance in these sheep? Like, why are you doing that? All right. Um, I had another friend, all right? And this guy's name, his name was Samuel, all right? And Samuel, Samuel owned a lot of land, all right? Pretty wealthy, you go off, off to a guy, a little bit, he's kind of a trust fund kid, you know, that's okay. Um, and Samuel, he, on all this land, all of a sudden, all these invaders came in and took away all this land. And once again, I go to him and I was like, yo, Sam, what up, dude? And Sam's like, man, I, I don't know. I feel like I have no purpose, no hope anymore. And I'm like, dude, why are you putting all your hope in this land? There's got to be something bigger than things that, we, that can be taken away from us. Right? If we place our hope in something that can be taken away from us, then it's always going to fail us. So, what are we talking about today? But before I tell you guys about my story, I feel like I need you guys to see it through uh, through the Word of God. So grab your scrolls um, and open them. Do we not have scrolls? No, no, no. What, what do we have? We have scrolls. A Bible? This. Oh! Well, that's fun. All right. Well, uh, so there's this guy, his name's Peter. Um, he wrote a couple books. Um, open up to, I guess, the first one. Uh, verses 1, verses 13. Um, yeah. And can I get, Chloe, can you help me move this board again? We're going to flip it around. Because it's going to flip it upside down. That's why. I have a question. Why did you slide it upside down? Because I didn't think of that. <laughs> you know, Doug's seen a lot of things in his life. Okay. I don't know what this means. If someone says antidepressants, they get kicked in the head with camp. I'm kidding. Do you know what drug he is? Who's gravity? Okay, maybe he is real. Identity theft is not cool. a joke, Doug. No, oh, no, I didn't know we had Nike sneakers from 2000. Nice, Caleb. Uh, no, 
Well, there was this man, uh, his name is Sh Shepard Jordan, and he produces them. So, yes. All right, so guys, what I want you guys to see today, can you all see this? Can you all read it? If you cannot read it, please get in a spot where you can read it. So move over this way yonder. Yonder, over the meadows, and over the lark. Should that be, uh, oh, you guys. Should that be Latin? Latin? Yes, Latin. What's a Latin? Latin! <laughs> Yeah, I get you. Okay. Okay. So, guys, what I wanted to do today, I'm actually move back a little bit, Chloe. All right. How do you know our name? Huh? How do you know our name? Because I know Chloe's like 10 ancestors ago. You didn't know my name. Well, I don't know you. Okay. So, what I want you guys to do is, I want you guys, so where you guys are always looking at this verse, you can be able to say, hey, what in the world is God trying to teach us from this? So, the verse says, Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. Now, the question is, how do we get... Did you just throw your name? Yes. This is important. How do we get to this term? Hope. What does that mean, and how do we get there? So, for us to fully understand this, and understand this verse... Sometimes, I mean, let's be honest, it's a little bit, it's a little complicated, right? It's got a lot of different phrases, prepositions, um, uh, nouns, nouns for, yes, thank you, yeah, a lot of things. And so, let's take it apart a little bit, and what I want you guys to do is I'm not eliminating these parts of the Bible verse. Just for the time being, I want you to forget about them, okay? So, what is this word? What type of speech is this? I don't know, you told me to forget about it. It is a preposition. Oh, really? How do you know Congrats. Yes. All right. So for the time being, I want you to forget that prepositional phrase. All right. There is another prepositional phrase. Starts where? There's multiple twos. This is part of a second of a, of a different prepositional phrase. It starts somewhere else. On the grace. That's correct. On the grace. Mm -hmm. And then, when Jesus Christ is revealed as coming, that is a clause. And so we are just going to put that right here. So that we can fully understand what the verse is talking about, and then we're going to go back to that. So, without that being there, let's read. What do we have left? Okay. Therefore, set your hope. Okay. Well, that's kind of simple. What's the what's the subject? Your uh, my ears hurt. Hope. Can you turn me down a little bit, Lydia? Do you know how to do that? The first switch. Turn it down a little bit. Turns it up a little bit more. Is that better? Is that better? Yeah. Turns it down. Can you hear me? Still through the speakers? Yes. Okay, that'll work. All right. So, what's the subject of this? Therefore, set your hope. Set hope. Mm. Not the subject. What is acting? Therefore. Set. Set. I don't know. Set. Set. That subset is the verb. Your. That is the verb. No. Therefore. No. Oh, there is none. There is one. Jesus Christ. With. Therefore. With. Not the comma. The space in between there. Your. The comma. Therefore. Your. Your. It's between Have you guys ever, ever seen this in grammar? No. Sometimes no. when you are giving a command, I you say, hey, do this, right? If I'm saying, hey, Annabelle, I need you to eat that donut, all right? So I'm saying, hey, eat the donut. You still know what would be the subject then? Time. It's an understood you, right? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you to do that. I'm just not saying the word you. Does that make sense? It's your then. No. I, if I'm saying... Go watch a football game. Oh, yes, yeah, the Steelers. Go is the first. Right? So what would be the subject? Who am I telling to go? Exactly. So it is you. Therefore, you. Why do you still know everyone's name but mine? Well, I don't know. I kind of make it up as I go, you know? All right. So you is the subject. 
And as we already indicated, set is the verb. So therefore, you, this is a command, right? It's an imperative. You know what imperative means? No. Command. Go do it. Yes. So therefore, you set your hope. This is not something that we are said to just like, oh, you can just maybe do it. No, it's saying, do it. Do it. Set your hope. So now the question is, what do we do with all these phrases? Right? And each of them answer a question. All right? So what do you guys think? What question does, does this question answer? Sorry, does this phrase answer? With minds that are alert and fully sober. What does that answer in the, in the sentence? What, that what they do you're saying is hopeful. No, 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 no. Danielle? That your minds need to be focused when you're working with your mouth. Well, you got the definition. That's correct. Yeah. So she says, she told me what the definition is. The definition is pretty much the whole entire thing means to be focused. But what this answers is answer the question of how, right? How do we set? We focus. That make sense? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay. How? Set. Focused. Okay. Second one is on the grace to be brought to you. What question does that answer? Levi. To receive something, but I do have another question. Yes. Is Charlie Brown a baby boomer? I don't know where that came from. Okay. Um, all right. What, how does this relate to this idea of hope? Is he patient? Yes, but from a from a particle of speech. Yes, correctly. It answers where. Where do we set our hope? We set our hope on what? On the grace. On the grace. Mackenzie, extra points. What grace? What? You don't have any more points, right? Yeah, there's no more points. Well, that's just, not my fault. Just like multiple, just like huh? double our points. Oh, and oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, just double our points. So now the question is, we need to understand uh, this last one. When Jesus Christ revealed his coming, what is that question? What does that answer? Who? Not who. Who when? what? When? 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 I like this question. Hmm? I know. No, this is good. This is good stuff. This is good stuff for you guys to learn. Okay. So there are a couple compact words that you guys need to know the, the meaning of. So whenever you see this, right? This is whenever you see this in the Bible at all or in your scrolls. Whenever you see that, I want you guys to circle this in big old pen. Because therefore signifies that they've already given us the answer. Right? This would be like going back to Ivy's example. All right? So, Ivy, I told you to go to the football game, and you went to the football game, and you hung out, and you had a good time, and then afterwards you hung out with your dad, you guys went and got food, yeah, yeah. And you come to church the next morning, and you're exhausted. And so, if I were to say, therefore, Ivy is exhausted. Therefore, I don't really know, but I told you earlier. Correct? Yeah. So we have to know, why should we set our hope? Why, it's already been told us, should we set our hope? Somebody read verses 3 through 5. First Peter? Yes. Okay. 3 through 5? Okay. Yeah. Annabelle, take it down. Uh, all praise to God, the Father our, of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again, because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. And we have priceless inheritance, and inheritance is that keep us in heaven for your pure, unified, beyond reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting your, you by his power until you have received his salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. Anna, what is our inheritance? Like what you get when people die. Mm -hmm. In that context of that verse, though, what inheritance is it talking about? That keeps us pure and undefined. A word? Yeah. Tristan. 
I just died, bro. <laughs> what? Jesus. No. Our inheritance <laughs> is where? But it's in some Heaven. place. Heaven. No. Yeah! Cool! You're okay. <laughs> and that whole entire passage is all about the promise of heaven, right? About how we have the promise of heaven. So, I'm going to write. Promise of heaven. Okay, so, now that we have this, let's read the verse again, okay? So, therefore, because we have the promise of heaven, yes, we need to focus and we need to set our hope on the grace. Now, what is grace? That's the second question. Oh, second thing for me to understand. Levi. I think I know. Yes. Oh. I was thinking of mercy starting. Off. It's okay. It's close. Wait, his name. Well, what? Where's its name? Well, yes? it is, okay. It's, it's not a capital like though. Empathy or sympathy? No, that's Ivy, what does grace mean? No, that's right. Yeah, so there's a difference between mercy and grace. So mercy is not giving someone punishment that they deserve, right? So that'd be like, let's say, Wyatt uh, hit me with his car. All right, Wyatt hit me with his car. Yes. Okay, let's say he hit me with his car. It would be merciful. Maybe a little doubt with me. It would be merciful for me to be like, oh, you know what? I forgive you. I'm not going to punish you for it. <laughs> now, it would be graceful for me to give him something he didn't deserve, right? So mercy is not giving, like, punishment. Grace is giving, like, something you don't deserve. So that'd be like, Wyatt, even though you hit me the car, I'm going to give you a new car. Or a, a, a new uh, group of oxen. What is this? <laughs> Right? And so giving someone something they didn't deserve. Now, we know that the thing we didn't deserve is is heaven. Yes. But when we talk about grace, our, the foundation of our grace is founded on a certain event. Boom! Yeah, correct the mundo, you are. 